Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Victor Sherp, and uh, I'm a founder of Osman uh, Project. Uh, basically, Osman is a mobile application which uh, serves for maps and navigation offline. And uh, first few words about Osman, quickly. So the project was started about eight years ago, and so far it was growing steadily, uh, but uh, so far we still have a small team working uh, on this product. It's about 10 people. But we have, uh, since the first day, it was an open source project by itself, so we've grown a good community. And so far we have a really huge number of contributors. I would say only about 100 people contributed to, to the code, and more than 1,000 contributed to translation projects. Uh, we really appreciate it, and I would like to thank you, everybody contributed so far. And uh, we make an application for, uh, that is used by about one million users today. And today I will be talking about how we make uh, our uh, maps live. Basically, how do we manage live updates on offline navigation, uh, basically on mobile devices. So to understand the problem, we can take, for example, uh, the map of Italy or of this region, Lombardy, so which is around 200 megabytes in Osmond, and uh, which takes to update just the region itself to generate the map. It takes around uh, three, four hours. So, and the situation we ended up is that we generate maps only once a month. Uh, and it takes us around 10 days. And obviously it is quite annoying for people who are contributing to OpenStreetMap and they would like to use Osmand uh, offline. It's quite annoying to wait one month to, to check their changes and re-download, needless to say that re-downloading 200 megabytes uh, also costs some money and usually quite some time. So we've been working quite a long time how to introduce incremental updates. The main challenge here is that we don't distribute maps by tiles, we distribute the whole region, and obviously uh, we need to implement a delta mechanism. So we ended up implemented uh, the map updates which are reasonably small and reasonably fast to download as well. Uh, it's about one megabyte per country, per region, uh, the whole day of changes. We try to generate these updates every 10 minutes, and we also manage to deliver uh, and we strive to deliver these updates every 15 minutes. So it means if you make a change on OpenStreetMap site or via JOSM, so in 15 minutes you can already see these changes uh, in uh, Osman project. So this is about it, but uh, let's talk about how we do it and what does it mean. Uh, to build that incremental update. Uh, the specific here is that you cannot make uh, incremental format or incremental update universal. That's actually the biggest struggle, uh, that you always need to target your format which your application uses. So in case your application is a simple OpenStreetMap database, then you target uh, simple tables like uh, node way relations, and your D format is a standard OSC format. But in case you are doing, for example, map rendering, then your format is already different because you store uh, in a different uh, columns, and your native D format would be, of course, a DDL, but unfortunately, it's not provided as far as I know. That's why everybody uh, basically spends lots of time on uh, rebuilding this update on machine itself and then updating the database. In our case, it's even more complicated because our format is just a file-based format, uh, binary format. Uh, and we needed to build lots of things from scratch, and that's what I will be explaining today, what are the difficulties. So our binary format consists mostly of five layers map, road graph, POI, transport, and address. And so far, we don't support only address updates, but for each layer, we had to implement a special logic. Uh, so important to say that always when you think about uh, to implement update mechanism, you need to find your primitives and then think how do you update the primitives itself. In uh, OpenStreetMap, the primitives are node, weight, and relations, but uh, for almost every application, 
they come up with their own primitives. For example, uh, for map rendering, you need to have a geometric object, which is polygon, uh, line, and point. Uh, for routing is uh, basically the line, but for example, for address and POI, it's more difficult because it's actually as a primitive the search keyword and search keyword result, and that means that you really need to structure it uh, differently. Also, to identify the changes, you need to have versioning, but versioning not OpenStreetMap, but on your primitives. So in, the, in our case, we could translate ID plus version to our primitives, but on the other hand, uh, that comes with a problem that when you change a node in a line, it changes ge geometry, but on the other hand, it doesn't change any versioning on the line in OpenStreetMap because the way it stays untouched, uh, and that creates a problem, and that's why you need to come up with a different versioning mechanism uh, in that. Uh, so it was always already a third approach. We were trying to build Osman Life because uh, we did some mistakes, so we, this time we did it much better. And what I would say is that we, what I could share, which requirements we put once we started again the big refactoring. So it's important that you can always regenerate the delta diffs in the past. So in case something happened and you are starting uh, delaying the updates, you can not only catch up with that, but you can also go in the past and correct the mistakes. It sounds, as, of course, not normal that you can go in the past and fix changes, but actually it simplifies uh, your life in a troubleshooting and maintaining the whole solution. Uh, another important thing is the speed. It's actually very important. If you cannot generate, a speed, generate changes fast enough, you will basically end up always trying to catch up, and in one moment something goes wrong, and you will never catch the live stream. So it's always recommended to measure it, and your speed should be at least two times a factor of two of a uh, changes stream. So it means if you want to generate 10 minutes update, you need to do it in five minutes at least. And of course, tools should be resilient, and data is better to be backed up by a third party in case you end up with a corrupted data, which we did this year four times. It, it is always possible to re-download it from third party. That doesn't mean that data is not backed up. It means that data could become corrupted. That's why it's important to have resilient tools and think about it in advance. So how we do it? So the generic approach we come up with is to generate the complete target map or tar tar complete uh, target format we, which you, your application supports before and after the change, possibly including all primitives changed. So you shouldn't target to, to include only what changed, but you should target to include at least what's changed, but try to, of course, reduce the, uh, <laughs> the size. And then the second step, which is important in that case, that you compare what's before and after, and then generate an accurate small div. So that basically helps to keep the div small and always specific to your application. Uh, approach, so once you generate a div every 10 minutes, so what you end up with, of course, is 250 uh, divs a day, and of course, 1,000 uh, divs a month. If we think that for every div we will distribute to mobile application and we'll end up with having 1,000 maps on a mobile device, of course, it's not efficient it's, and it's no-go process. So what we do, we combine uh, data per day. We group them per day and per month. So every time the user downloads the div, he always downloads all the changes done for this day. So it's still relatively small size, but on the other hand, instead of having 250 files, he will have only one. And we also combine them by months, excluding last day. So what we also need to make sure that uh, we constantly recombine uh, files, and it also adds to the speed of processing, which we need to be aware of to catch the live stream. Uh, good that we, we need to combine constantly by day, but only once a day we need to combine all the files per month. 
Uh, this is, a, I'm going to the lowest uh, technical uh, level. This is overpass query we use to retrieve our complete data. So we struggled a lot with the uh, OSC format and trying to retrieve what has changed, augmented, and so far. And we ended up with a nice tool overpass, which helps us to retrieve what exactly we need. It's a quite complicated query. I will try to quickly explain what it does. But it's extremely important that it provides enough data. So what it does, it uh, uh, scans what node weights and relationship uh, were changed in the, in the period. Then it tries to retrieve all nodes for re existing relations and all relations uh, for existing nodes. And then it goes from, a, so shortly saying it goes from a bottom up. And then once it retrieved all relations, it goes from relation from top to bottom. Uh, it's, it's very important for us uh, to, I can illustrate it with a simple example, if your primitive object is a subway line. So in that, uh, in that case, uh, in OpenStreetMap it's translated to such primitives as relations, nodes, and way segments. And of course, uh, if one node has changed, the, all your primitive which you display in your application as a subway lane, you need to regenerate. For example, the color uh, needs to be retrieved from relation. It doesn't, it's not present on the node. That's why we ended up having uh, such a complex query because our primitive is not a node way or relation. I think in almost all applications it's a case. The primitive is something more complex. And uh, that's important that Overpass provides a flexibility for us and, uh, to do these things. So let's switch to the topic of the tools. And uh, as I said, Overpass is the most important tools we are using underneath. And it's great that it's backed up by community and it's provided uh, for us as a third party. So we can always uh, re-download if it's corrupted, crashed, and re-download things in the past. It's also relatively quick to apply the changes. So it's a factor of five. It's relatively quick as well to retrieve the data. Though it becomes much slower, it's a factor of three. And as you see, these numbers almost add up. Of course, some things you can parallelize to run uh, update in parallel and uh, retrieve in parallel, but still something you cannot par uh, make parallel. And then what you need to take care of is the speed of the whole generation process. And because the Osman binary from format is only used by Osman, so all the other operations are done by Osman map creator, but uh, they are available, and everybody could basically replicate them uh, if he wants. Uh, so now let's talk about uh, interesting uh, side project for our live map updates is donation to OpenStreetMap contributors. So uh, from the uh, first day, uh, that was a, a paid feature uh, for the application which we published on Google Play. It was always uh, free if you download a nightly application. Uh, but st from the first day, we decided to some kind of uh, split it and give it back to a community. So we, it's not a huge amount of uh, revenue, but what we decided to do is uh, to do something different. Try to thank uh, the OpenStreetMap contributors who do it, uh, who do the changes themselves. And uh, what, we dis uh, what we are doing, we are paying, we are keeping 50% to Osman team, and 50% we are distributing for all people who make the changes and subscribed with their Bitcoin address uh, to basically to get uh, the, t I would call it tips. Uh, but actually in a total amount, we, we started doing it since 2016, we paid out almost 23 Bitcoins. Of course, Bitcoin was different price uh, from in 2016, but we still keep doing it and we still enjoy it doing it, uh, and I think we will continue doing it. Uh, what I also would like to steal some, uh, to, uh, to steal some time from my presentation and talk about future, because I think it's even more important to talk on conference about future rather than present uh, situation. Uh, actually, I would like to talk about the future of data and uh, what does it mean data? When uh, Osman was started, uh, it was 
Uh, it was a first impression that it's possible to start Osman to build because there is OpenStreetMap project exist, which provides data. Of course, we can end up with a chicken and egg problem where you don't have data, you don't have pro projects, and you, if you don't have good projects, then nobody contributes to the data. But we need to collaborate in the sense that we also need to build the tools that support projects and data. And uh, all projects around OpenStreetMap are built on open data. But obviously, not all OpenStreetMap data is an OpenStreetMap database. One of the wonderful examples is the GPX tracks, which, of course, are hosted, for example, by OpenStreetMap website, but they don't belong to OpenStreetMap database. And there are tons of examples of data which maybe doesn't necessarily belong yet to uh, OpenStreetMap project, but it really helps to build great tools around it and uh, support other projects. For example, in Osman, we use OpenStreetMap, Wikipedia, and Wikivoyage uh, since that year. And we only are looking forward to expand it because our main goal is to provide applications that uses that data. Uh, but we also think how to work on the tools that will encourage people to, uh, to contribute and uh, to basically populate that data. What's important in, uh, what's interesting in OpenStreetMap projects is there are tons of format. And first, when I uh, started investigating, I was thinking it's ridiculous. Why we cannot use one single format? And I changed my opinion really over years. I think actually it's beauty of having lots of format. Each portion of data deserves own format. Each application deserves own derived format. Of course, it's complex, and that's what I would like to talk. So each format basically has a, its own kind of very similar life cycle to convert from existing format, to distribute, to update. And in the OpenStreetMap, we're also talking about some uh, special features like partition by B-Box or by countries, and also support incremental updates because a stream of data which is coming is pretty significant comparing to other projects. So, when I'm thinking about projects and applications, so I think about Overpass as a great uh, format, but there is a project called Overpass Query Engine. We have a, a OSM to PG SQL that, con that populates into a format of a PostGIS, and then we have a products that are using that data, like Mapnik. Uh, we also have some scenarios that almost everybody trying to use, like uh, DIM data, which is stored as a pictures, and any router tool would like to use this. So if, if you want to build a project, for example, you would like to make something uh, better and make use of it, your first question, where to take the data, if it exists, and not everything belongs in the end to OpenStreetMap, where actually I think the community is ready for other sources, which we anyway have. So what I would like to bring idea and start discussion is if we can progress with some kind of application network uh, that will support, that will first of all provide registry of data where you can find who is the owner of information of that database data set, what is the license, who is a maintainer, that will support out of the box a torrent distributed download. So in case somebody is doing a great job and distributing uh, overpass a database, which is 300 gigabytes, you can also collaborate and help distributing the data set because you're making use of it, at least partially. But that will be already a great help. Partition data by GOB box. So all these operations are very similar to every format we have uh, in OpenStreetMap. And I think we some kind of need to keep that beauty, but also standardize the tools around the beauty of formats. And uh, that's, so I'm really looking forward uh, for peop uh, to meet with people uh, who share that idea and uh, yeah, let's let's build it together and let's see how it works. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Victor, also for the last uh, comments and suggestion. And uh, now it's open for questions.
Yeah, I have a, a, just a curiosity, but how is your business? Because uh, you are a company, you are working for a company, so which are your customers? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult question, of course. Uh, uh, customers is who is willing to pay. And the business is working when it's sustainable. So as I, as I told, uh, that Osman Live feature is a paid feature. And I believe it's, first of all, I think lots of people who contribute to OpenStreetMap also buying that feature. And some people other way around are actually getting back paid by that feature. So it's kind of circulating money in the world. Uh, but uh, our customers, primarily what I see, it's mostly technical people and also people who don't tr who try to avoid any kind of uh, analytics and uh, uh, kind of things, marketing things in the application itself because we try to be open source and completely free from trackers and so on. So some technical questions? No? Was, oh, yes, there is one. Yeah, because I understand that was clear, but some curiosities? Uh, hello. Thank you for the very nice application, Osman. Uh, what I miss for a long time is the possibility to edit ways, like in the way you can, mod like for the OpenStreetMap editing feature, I would yeah. also like to edit ways or at least uh, uh, change the text since often points of interest are mapped as ways and, and not as nodes. Do you plan implementing this feature? Uh, yeah, uh, actually the, the release we are making and we have that uh, question popped up recently and we just realized that we can make uh, exactly what you said, editing text of ways without creating a special layer that you can really drag uh, things around. So yes, it's actually almost done and coming. And regarding your question about complex editing, it's, it's very difficult because Osmond, which relies on offline, it's not based on OpenStreetMap data itself. So in that sense, we cannot transform back. <laughs> Once we transform the DAO format, we cannot transform it back really to OpenStreetMap data. And we kind of also afraid we will do lots of mistakes when we try to upload it to OpenStreetMap. So it's, but regarding text editing, yes, that's actually coming and that, that will work soon. Yes. Yes, uh, uh, again, thank you for Osmond. And uh, just a curiosity. Um, I understand that uh, Osmond uh, use a uh, proprietary data format for the maps. Uh, and you told during your presentation that uh, it is needed because uh, different data is a different data format. Can you tell us something a bit more why it is needed? Uh, different data format for maps and not uh, custom OSO5, for example? Later? Well, it first of all starts, of course, uh, uh, that when you are creating an application, whether existing format suits you or not. And uh, when Osmond was started, there was no format that could fit it, actually. I would say today, probably there are formats. But again, if you are targeting specific features, for example, you are trying to make an application for public transport specifics, then very likely even Osmond format will not be helpful for you. So you will end up having your own. Of course, it could be derived format, uh, but it still will be different. So I could say why Osmond format is different, because we were targeting at the speed, and PBF, for example, was uh, very slow because it contains zip. or 5M didn't exist by that time, I think. So it's specific needs that are driving. And I believe even if we are talking about, OK, mobile is separate and server side is the same, I still believe that it's better to have different formats and to create infrastructure how to convert from one format to another, because formats are targeting at the speed and lots of other features, I would say. OK, uh, my question is, you mentioned that that uh, the customers for the live features are mainly mappers who want to verify their edits. Do you have a feeling if that's really true, or is there also a group of people, just normal end users, who uh, use the live features to have a, a, 
up-to-date map to have construction mapping by the day? Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm asking that because uh, that could influence the mappers uh, backward um, to do even more um, construction mapping short term um, and there's a heavy discussion in Germany if this is a good idea. Well, I, I truly believe maybe it's a good idea because our stream of changes is not that massive and could be improved, but also I cannot say that everybody is using because it's Osmers. I think, again, it uh, will be distribution between 20 and 80, but again, it's my guess because we don't have exact numbers. That's a challenge for us to have exact numbers. But what I do feel, if when we have problems with our life and it started delaying by like three or four hours and, uh, and it's catastrophe when it's one day, I see lots of people saying, okay, I did my changes, I could not verify my changes, how can I check and so on. So, and the expectation today from some people that are actually in our chat is like, in 30 minutes I should be able to verify. And one year ago, if we barely could actually change it in a day, but I think it's a, exactly what I told the chicken and egg problem that once you have a good tool, you can actually start producing more changes. If you don't have tool, then you're kind of lazy producing changes because you don't know how to use these changes anyway, and something like that. Last question, if any. Yeah, don't be shy. The last question. No, we're done. We're done. Thank bad. you. So thank you, Victor. <laughs> <laughs>